we call our meeting for exactly 5.15. With the usual suspects present. <laughs> Roxanne Parent, Lee Whitcomb, Russ French, and Laura Lucero. And we have minutes to review. I did go through them quickly myself. Well, this is oh this is uh continuing from the other that has was the continuance from the prior meeting yes mm -hmm. Just initially, I'll put the top. Is it possible for me to get a copy of this? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'll email it to you tomorrow morning. Sure. Still have a fan going, so. Mm -hmm. What was this for? The last two meetings, basically. Next schedule meeting, July 6th. It was, but then they canceled it because she was sick. July? It was July 6th. Lee canceled it, and we had it. We met on July 20th, and now we're meeting on July 27th. July. <laughs> Right. That one stretched out a bit. Yes. Yes. Terrific. So approved as read. We have no new mail and no bills to pay, which is <laughs> a fine state to be in. Yes. Okay, recent sales. There are no new listings. And we have one recent sale that was just within the last day or two. And it is out. At the end of Williamsburg Road, down at the Williamsburg Town Line, on the left, out in the woods. The one right on the town line. Yep, way, module way house. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. <sighs> yep. So, does this say what they were asking or what they were asking? No, we have not found it on the open market yet. It was not listed. I think it might have been a sale to a tenant. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. And we found no listing at all. It was a very private sale. We like the price, but we found no listing, so it may not be an arm's length sale that we could use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sold for 240. 
240, and we had it valued at 225.7. And these are our new permits. Ooh, I need to get that out of the machine. Too. Did you get anything on the trust? Yeah, Dallas. That, that no. One, that one through. Yeah, yes, the sale did. Yes. The, the, the deed was last week. I mean, that last week it was in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a new survey to look at, though. The Barker property down at the intersection of South Park. The house, the old house is going to be sold with a 5.1 acre piece of land with it. And the rest of the house retained, or, and the rest of the land retained. So it's a split. This is what's coming up for sale? Is that what yes. You said? Oh. Yes. Parcel divided into two is what you were saying. Uh, yes, they've they've taken. Um, it has been a thirty-five acre parcel, thirty-five plus a whisker, and so they're taking five point five acres out of that to to sell with the old house. One hundred and fifty-seven feet is enough. It's enough to do a four-acre back. Four-acre back lot. It's not a frontage lot. Okay. There we go. So it was originally 35 acres? Yes. Plus a Lester. Yep. The end of South Park Road. They have kept two legal frontages here on this yeah, side, but this, this would have, this to, be would be, have to be a back lot. Be a back lot, right? Because it's two hundred. Yes. Normal. Did they, how many parcels did they divide the thirty-five acres into? Two. Okay. They cut one out of them. Evidently, they're considering they, they, this they, all. They had a piece like this, and they cut a piece here, out of the middle. <laughs> so they left it so they could. So they didn't. They act, could sell they another actually, half. Did they actually right. survey the back? No. They, just, they didn't. They, they just, just sort of like created new, this piece. a new survey for the new pace alone. So there's no recorded survey for the entire. So is this accurate? Back land. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we have to rely on it being accurate. It's it's a recorded survey. Yeah. I wonder where they didn't do the back lot, I wonder. Well, maybe the cost. I don't know. Maybe there was no reason at the moment. It seems kind of so. When they sell so, half of it, this is the intersection of Roaring Brook Road <laughs> yep. and South Park. This goes out to Lesser's house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this comes up toward the uh, waterworks. Mm -hmm. And this is that big old two story Victorian concrete block house. Oh, yeah. 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 The Barker's grandfather had been the clerk of the works or in charge of the construction of the Weldon up in Greenfield. And this was made of the same kind of material. Oh, yeah. So at any rate, um, David has now passed away, the brother who was living there. And so this Janet owns it now, as I understand, although I haven't seen anything in probate yet, but it was just the two of them left. Mm -hmm. So they're cutting this piece out and they're retaining all of this. So they're gonna sell this. Is that they're what they're selling? Gonna offer this on the market. Yep. Oh, I see. Yeah. Five acres makes it an attractive proposition, and mm -hmm. and um, there's enough here to have two frontage lots of 200, 200 feet or more each, but this doesn't have the 200 feet, so it would have to be a four acre back lot. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so and we're just supposed to uh, just approve. initial that if you would okay. just initial it initially just means I've seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's nothing we can do with it. Right, we don't right. have any approval um, uh, Our responsibilities there. Mm -hmm. 
really this understood. Oh, uh, yes. It's not. Nothing. I haven't seen it go out yet. They just had it uh, passed this week or late last week through the planning board. Um, yeah, Sam Lovejoy was in last week one day because it was the planning board that night or something. So it's it's quite recent. And okay, among other things. Oh, I didn't sign that. Did you want me to sign that? Oh, yes, please. Okay. Do I have to sign each one? Or no, we can put them. It'll be all right. We, we reviewed the current ones. These are the building permits. Gas and exterior gas line to a new generator. Yeah, yeah. Nothing uh, significant. Wire of a replacement furnace and AC. Yep, so nothing. Water heater. I think too substantial there. Anything that requires a site visit from us. Uh, we have no motor vehicle abatements today. Updates with Tyler, etc. Uh, <laughs> review updates with Tyler is our next line, and we're continuing to have improvements with our communications and solving the little problems as they come along. But I have. Um, contacted both Vision and Patriot Properties about presenting us with information. Vision has, uh, Patriot has sent us a demo that we can look at online at any time. Vision has an assisted demonstration where she does it as a Zoom meeting. One of their people does it as a Zoom meeting. She could do it next week, but you're away? Yes. Okay. So then the earliest would be the 10th. And, and we're doing this, why? Simply to see, to give them a fair shot. I don't know. I'm to see if opposed. it might do wise to. It would not happen swap. soon, not until well after bills went out and everything else. Yeah. And I do not want another one, but if there's still problems, it and this is going to go on on the third year and they haven't been solved but one note this is our first year that the treasurer made 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 is that a lot of the problems on the property cards happen during the conversion mm -hmm. one system trying to interpret what it's pulling from another system so if oh, we yeah. were to convert again we're going to have to do it it's going to happen all over again it there's going to be errors because Patriot or Vision is going to try and interpret what Tyler has. And 22 was only was the first year in which bills went out on Patriot. Uh, I mean, on, on Tyler. In 21, we did use our old program because I was not, I didn't feel comfortable that it was ready yet. So we've had bills go out one year on the new program. So we can look. Uh, I did find out that QDS, I talked to their representative, Rebecca Krause Hardy, and said, are you compatible to the tax collection program, the billing and collection program with Vision and Patriot? And she said, yes, we are. So that would not mean that the collector had to replace any of her Oh, well, that's a big change. It's it's an important piece of information. Right. We would just lose some of the functions that right. we can do on this end. Right, right. Currently through QDS, we can do more that, that than we used to be able to. Um, and it did occur to me too, this past year, QDS, the collections, billing the tax collecting program did took over all of the printing and mailing of all the bills. And so with that, we would not be able to put in any kind of an informational sheet mm -hmm. because it isn't done here in town. So there's something for us to keep in mind, just another way around that, a different means of communication that would get information out equally well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so that's my updates with Tyler. Um, we can wait and do the Patriot demo in the same evening that we looked at on the 10th. Which is the next meeting. Now, did you say someone's gonna come here or would that be a Zoom? No, that they sent a demo that takes care of itself. Oh. This does oh. not need to be assisted. Oh. Patriot did. Oh, yes. so they don't, they don't actually come here and no, they don't. give us a presentation. Right. Um, we can make down, you know, note down questions, whatever. We can phone them the next day with anything mm -hmm. and get full answers, of course, from them mm -hmm. accordingly. Yeah. And the local radius is using Patriot. I believe a lot of the towns are Asheville, Buckland, Shelburne, Charlemont, <laughs> Sunderland. Greenfield. They all, they all use Patriot. Sunderland. Greenfield does. Uh -huh. They Green, use I Patriot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not too many around here use vision. Yeah. Well, then almost that would make sense because then you would have some support if you have a question. The other towns are all using it. Wouldn't that make sense? It's a thought to keep in mind. You know, the, of course, we still have to get the town to approve a $25,000 bill for conversion. <clears throat> That's got to go to town meeting. And we just did this and two years ago. Saying, you just did this just two years did ago. This. Yes, but if people understand that there's a problem with it, wouldn't but they? I think we need to figure out again, like the treasurer said, are the errors from the misinterpretations of the conversion? So when we convert again, we're going to have it's going to start all over again. It doesn't matter what it is. It's if we don't the, want it's that. The, it's the, and, and it it's one program that. interpreting another program. Oh God, the thought of it compounding anything just it makes my blood run cold. Yeah, multiply because you were just finding out that it wasn't computing depreciation, right? And that was was that all the way back from 2021. Well, the only year that it did it was 2022, because we weren't on that program in 2021. We started the conversion, but we didn't do the taxes off. The right, program. exactly. We started the program, and we were we had the conversion of we data done, and we were working in the program and comparing the two. And I was trying to get through all of them and compare each account, you know, one to the old one, to see how much of a difference it was. And I didn't feel that I had time enough to finish it all, and therefore I asked the state if we could go ahead and continue billing one more year with the old program because we had great confidence in that. We'd used it for many, many years. We'd used it for 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because I'm totally confused because <laughs> just from my perspective, that's when all mine got messed up in 21. In the conversion. You get, you know, yeah, the fiscal year. Yeah, yeah that's where it gets, it gets confusing. I know. Yeah. I know. I get that. Why did they do that? <laughs> the state, the state just made it more complicated oh, for everybody. Oh, it sure did. <laughs> it sure did. Eighty-one towns or seventy-two towns or however many. Oh, I started to say, "Oh my golly, what are we in for here?" Yeah. But at any rate, okay. um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd been through a conversion back in two thousand two, and that was bad enough and now their standards are even higher of course because at that time they were checking a lot of the data and and now they require so much more from the communities for proof that that the that one was a bad enough memory <laughs> but we'd go through that and had a fine fine program for almost 20 years until the state decided they were could no longer support it they couldn't hmm. afford to do it for only 80 towns all the other towns were already on another private vendor whom they paid independently. We 80 towns were still subscribing to the state plan, mm -hmm. which had a minimal annual cost. I think it was $1,500 a year. Oh, wow. We had unlimited in-person support. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic, mm -hmm. yeah. And if necessary, they'd some send somebody out. Well, that would be another real key as to what their support is yes. in these programs. Because it sounds like you're having a trouble with Tyler because you get put on a, a well, list. Well, we're put on, yeah, when they when I send in a problem, 
it's written up and then it's posted to some sort of electronic posting board. Right. As, as most even smaller companies, if, if you call customer service for things, that's the way they work. It, they're called help tickets and it, it just goes in an electronic carousel and the next available representative is the one who grabs your ticket. Yeah. Well, is Patriot like that. local though? So Patriot yeah. is out of Marblehead. Right, where Tyler is like... It's it's national. Yeah. So yeah, Patriot is uh, I think New England, Northeast. So they might have a little better. Um, They've worked in Massachusetts many 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 years. Right. So that I'm thinking they. And might Vision have. has also, mm -hmm. because we looked at both of them in back in 2002. We had them both come and do demonstrations. Mm -hmm. At that time, I liked Vision's program very very much, but the cost was prohibitive. And, but it was a beautiful program. Mm -hmm. um, it just seemed to hit everything that we needed, plus a lot, but uh, the, the cost was just. And I'd have to assume it's probably in this five times what? In the same ballpark. I don't think they've lowered their cost. I have no idea. No. We didn't go into that at all. Yeah. <laughs> they need to know how many parcels we have, how much we have of commercial, industrial, whatever. Oh, before yep. they give you a price? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it's based on the number of parcels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I already sent a parcel count to Patriot. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, he can use that to prepare uh, some figures for us. And that'll be very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the review and updates at the moment. Um, log homes, posting property cards on the website. One thing I'm going to jump to number eight because it relates to this. I have been having, I've been working on land values for the new year because truly that's the basis of everyone's, everyone has a land value, whether they have a, a structure on it or not. And so I've been working on them and based on sales have not been able to make anything work to come up with a change that brought the land sales to match the land values to match the actual sales. And so I would like to get Roy Bishop to come up. He's our regular consultant, revaluation consultant and work on that. Now he said he also has to do our two 504s anyway, which are the um, communications accounts. Um, Eversource and uh, not a communications, the, the power companies. Uh, he has to do them anyway and review them and provide the figures for us. He does them for $500 each per year. Mm -hmm. um, he has said he would come up and do this other land and probably some structures too um, for $1,500. Well, we have over 20,000 in our revaluation or our valuation. Mm -hmm. money and he is available later this week and um so can you explain to me what you're trying to do to, to evaluate the land so it needs what to i increase. have to do is change our land schedule because sales have gone up so much that the, the land of, component the Right, the, the, the value. The yes, value. yes. Yeah. The, 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 the amount they sell for has gone up so much. Mm -hmm. And a portion of each sale is its land. Mm -hmm. Well, that proportion has gone up so much too mm -hmm. that they no longer um, are covered by our land schedule. It's way, way low based on what are the current market sales. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying all kinds of different approaches to the land schedule and to adjusting that to what's been demonstrated in the sales. Mm -hmm. That's probably a better way of explaining it. Mm -hmm. So if they brought up, do you go by percentage or what? How do you do that? It's not fitting in well. And so where I know is more ways to do this than you can shake a stick at. And he's also been working in 20 other towns this year. Mm -hmm. And so he will have additional 
input from a larger base than we have. So I feel that his time is very, very worthwhile. We're on the road. <laughs> um, it's we're getting close to where we need to be, getting our values pulled together for fiscal twenty three, and I feel that this would greatly facilitate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that we spend the fifteen hundred dollars. Get him to come as soon as he can. I second. Do we have you, any questions or discussion? No, I think okay. that's what we need to do. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I will let him know. And thank you. I think it is going to move things along better. We're in a very unusual situation. I saw my first article within the last couple of days saying that it, the market may be starting to slow down a little bit and but there's no real um, sign of any stabilization either yet. Mm -hmm. So I would think that we would be looking at not an increase to bring us up all the way to the current selling prices, but maybe part way. So that if it does stabilize, well, interest rates are getting raised up again. They are getting raised. Yes, that's going to so affect it. That could change things. Yes, yes. And if they are going to stabilize, we don't want to over jump them up next year. Right. So it's better to go half or two thirds of the way up and be in a good position for next year. To uh, raise them again next year. Yeah, or lower them a little bit, maybe. If it came to that, that would be glorious. But but then it just fluctuates the tax rate. So at the moment, it looks like we'll be going up in values, which will bring the tax rate down a little bit. Because once again, town meeting spent everything out of free cash. Mm -hmm. So there was so their, nothing their except the town did budget. Not, did not get increased. Very little. Yeah, not much. Very little. And the, so there was nothing that... Uh, will significantly hit what has to be raised and appropriated. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ron, come on in. One Hi, second. how are you? I'm fine, how are Just you? Just a quick question. Sure. Does Lance still belong to the Shriners? Oh, yeah. Does he still go down there once in a while? Yeah. But I got a couple of buckets of tabs. Put them in the car. Now comes ain't around anymore. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll drop them off sometime. Okay, well, the car's unlocked many times. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you. Hi, Ron. Hi. <laughs> I'm here most of the day tomorrow, so yep. you see my car. Drop them off. All right. That's good. Thank All you. righty. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, okay. A couple of other things to throw in. We have had to do um, a number of small abatements to a gentleman who was wrongly listed for many years as the owner of a sliver of property that comes over the town line from Goshen, way down there off Williamsburg Road. And it's not accessible from Conway in any way unless you can hike in. Uh, it is no use, it's a, a portion um, of a property that was owned on the Goshen side. And the Goshen farm that owned it went into tax taking. But because this land was in Conway, Goshen couldn't take, it. couldn't take it. And at that point, we finally figured out that, oh, gee, this was still hanging out there. And the fellow, we had to go back two or three owners. The fellow who had bought the farm and went into tax title had a couple of crazy deeds going with a former neighbor, one of which said, okay, here, I'm selling you this land. Turned out the neighbor didn't still own it actually. <laughs> and so neither did the farmer. And so we had to go back to the nineties to find the correct owner as being a man whom we think might be in Enfield, Connecticut. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Who's gonna get a bill for land in Conway. That yes. 
owned as far as the family has for 35 years right the family has that his family hasn't owned yeah since then so he's going to be happily surprised but in the meantime (laughs) in the meantime we need to refund the gentleman whom we thought had owned it oh and so um the fellow that the to whom the, the rest of it was sold. It's a Mr. Ravolo. He lives down in Hatfield. And it was quite a search through deeds in two counties uh, to get it all sorted out because we had these side issues, you know, of a tax taking. They couldn't come over the town line <laughs> and all this. So Jan and I finally uh, worked our way through all of it. And we believe it's owned by this Kevin Summers. So has he been getting a bill all this time? Mr. Rivolo has, yes. And he's been paying it because oh. it's been like a $7 bill and oh, you don't okay. think right. about it. And so right, or, or $2.95, bucks. things like this. Well, yeah, $7. Okay. The highest, the lowest was $7.96 in one year. And the highest was $27 back in 2012. Um, the total for about 13 years, 15 years, is $246.15, 30 bucks. 15, 15. <laughs> and so this is simply going to say, yes, um, what he did pay mm-hmm. will can be refunded. And oh. Jan will do that. Um, he simply hadn't bothered to do anything about it. He didn't think he owned it, but he wasn't sure. And he hadn't done any of the research himself. Mm-hmm. And when we said, well, it was over the line from the part of the farm that was taken by the town. Oh. I see. <laughs> I didn't and buy that. It was it was just a real confusion <laughs> issue. So that's what this refund. Um, it's a, a set of that. abatements. We have to have. No, we do not have to do individual certificates for each year. Jan said in this case she can work from this because I've sorted them out by year. Yeah, and she provided we me with the amounts. Oh, what was that here? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. And all the figures double check against hers. Crazy kind of situation. Okay, this is the summary sheet that goes, Jan's uh, summary that goes with it. That takes care of that one. And ah, uh, every year at this time, we have to do a report called the omitted and revised report. On again. Mm-hmm. Okay. We should okay. be able to continue. Okay. That was so fair. at this year, uh, at this time of the year, once a year, you do what's called omitted and revised report to the um, to the state. And when the bills go out in the fall, occasionally, um, for whatever reason, maybe because it was brand new, there might have been one or two accounts omitted. Uh, some get revised or get brought out of chapter and there's a rollback tax Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. charged during the year, Mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So this report is for omitted, revised, and rollbacks. And this was our summary for fiscal 22, everything that was that was um, omitted and revised and so forth. Those are the accounts, about seven of them. One was the Goddard piece that was brought out of chapter to be sold, they did pay the rollback taxes back then and then. Mm-hmm. 
Det her er en anden måde, som er en god udsvaring, fordi du kommer meget på en eller anden måde. No? So explain, tell me what this is. Maybe. Well, that's Community Preservation Fund. Okay. That was oh, added oh, on oh. to these bills. Oh, okay. Um, I did not have to do that, but I did it just simply to double check it against chance figures. What we're dealing with here are the values of yeah. what was omitted and revised and the amount of tax oh. you know, in three different categories. Oh, okay. okay. So the 101s are the single family homes. Yeah. This was the tax and this was the value on the single family home because mm -hmm. we have to report both. This is the vacant lands. Yeah. And then this is the commercial or in this case, land that was in chapter. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. They total up to these amounts, a uh, value of 912,700 out of our 295 million. Mm -hmm. And then taxes of 16,658.27. Okay. So that's what I've reported to the state mm -hmm. for our, um, Mid and revised, and this is just a good initial it. And we'll, okay. we'll date it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, it's seven seven twenty-two. This is another notification from her of a couple of more tax taking actions from her office, from Jan's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Isaiah Brown piece is the little piece as you, just after you cross the bridge here, between the little bridge here on Academy Hill Road at the, at the parking yep. lot yep. and Ronnie Hawk's piece. It's just a little piece of woods and grass. Oh, okay. Yeah, but and Isaiah- So what are they doing with it? They're going to, she's going to take it for non-payment of taxes. Mr. Brown died in 1899 oh, oh, oh. and left it to his heirs who apparently didn't know that they inherited it. Mm -hmm. And so none of them ever did anything with it. Nobody's been paying any taxes. Been paying any taxes. <laughs> it was an owner unknown for many years mm -hmm. until we finally figured out who, who owned it. And so she's going to be taking that. The Dickinson piece is down in the Northampton Waterworks. If you went down to where the driveway goes in kind of opposite the end of Roaringbrook Road, yeah. if you went in there about a quarter of a mile, it's a lot on the right and it's completely surrounded by the waterworks now. Uh, it is still a very nice 12 or 15 acre lot, mm -hmm. but- well, You wouldn't have access? Can you get access to it? I don't believe they can refuse access because it was on a road at the time it was, it was let go. But the family, for a number of years, still had descendants in, White, in West Whiteley mm -hmm. and continued to pay taxes. But they have decided they are not interested in it. Uh, nobody's interested in carrying on. They're going to let it go to the town. So what will the town do with that? Auction the town usually. takes it. The town, yeah, they will auction it. And it'll probably go to the waterworks. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I would assume they'd be the only only bidders. Well, why wouldn't someone else want it? The question of access is one of them. Uh, it would require consulting with attorney and attorney to make sure. And um, somebody, anybody could. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. But well, because it was taken, it's possible that the, the access would get erased. It's it's a serious question. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. if it's still a liable lot, can they actually do Depends that? How the deed is written. Uh, Partly, yes. Yes. And what the Waterworks has now for legislation protecting them. Hmm. If there are brooks, brooks on this that are feeding into the reservoir, um, they may have some sway and power in determining what's done with this law. Mm. Um, there are several questions. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another just initial and okay. Did I initial it? No. Seven. There we go. And to you for everyone to be aware of. And we did receive a copy of a lien certificate on the 
um, house at 149 Whiteley Road here. The newer house on the former Heather True Love parcel. Um, Are you referring to uh, Robbie Edwards? Yep. Yep. Run by Robbie, Emily and Robbie Edwards. Um, this is the request for the municipal lien certificate, which indicates that it is selling. Yes. Yeah, they don't contract. request this until such time as because they're getting ready for the closing. August 22nd. Yes. Oh. Um, 15th, actually, 15th. they say here. Yep. August 15th is their closing date. So that will be interesting to see. It doesn't give a price, of course. Oh, this is the one that's been up on sale for sale down here? Yeah. Yeah, the yellow sell house, by, the newer house. Sell by owner. Mm -hmm. Oh, so mm -hmm. they got a buyer, huh? They did. Oh. I don't recognize the name at all. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's the, they initially had, before they put it on the market, they had a, a personal, a person, it on somebody, sale? yeah, it, it, there question. was somebody who. It, it was, was on the open market. There was somebody yeah. who was going to buy the house and then something happened where they weren't going to buy the house and they put it on the market and I guess. This person may have come back. Yeah. But we'll so wait it was and see. a totally private, I know you, you know me, I want your right. house kind of thing. Situation. Right. Here again, it may or may not be an arm's length. We'll send them the sales verification forms. Oh, you want me to send this? Yes, one? please. Okay. Yeah, we'll send them the sales verification forms and see what information comes out of that. Do we have an address for, them, for the guy who's buying it yet? No, they no, no, something so. like that yet. I didn't think so. Right. And as I say, I don't recognize the name, but that doesn't mean anywhere, any, anything. There we go. Okay, now, review of log homes, posting cards on the website. I did find that I had started a key code back in the winter for the um, Tyler property record cards. I just printed that out today. Uh, since we kind of handed you that project to review, mm -hmm. thought you might like to take that and see if that's useful as is, or needs additions, or, or what. Oh, so where would this information be posted that you're saying? Well, on the parcel page, or on the land page. You know, I've, I've in, noticed here where you would find it, where you'd find these initials. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, the page on which you'd find it, and then therefore what it means. Okay. I haven't added things like the quality ratings, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but this was a start that I had made on that. Mm -hmm. And see if we're worth using that this to continue with. It can be both sides of one page easily enough. Uh -huh. So we're talking about using this information to put out there to mm -hmm. the property card. To help interpret your property record yeah. card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It can be posted. It can be here to be picked up. But I think I'm, on can... the property card, I didn't see any of the stuff listed. I'm not quite sure what all this. Well, the source codes for the... Oh, here's a property I have record card. Oh, a thousand cards. property cards right yeah. behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, the source code on the entrances. Uh, where did you found that? That was back here. It's not something I look at. Here we go, my entrances. Well, that's true. They're not on. No. They don't show that on the property record card. It's information that we have to choose and fill out. Yeah, I, I was looking at this and I yeah, never see any right. of this. <laughs> I look at a lot of on the card, card itself. <laughs> so we can cross things off and add others. But you can't keep that property card because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in my pile to be filed. That's a so okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Now, what have you come up with as far as putting, have you had a chance to work on well, it? Well, I did, and I couldn't find the one that I was looking at online. I couldn't find it again. Mm -hmm. um, there was one that I found that explained it a little bit and they showed a property card. Key um, elements of a property. Right, the, the town you've been looking at, you mean before. Yes, I liked. couldn't find it again. <laughs> but this is something that they, you know, you can post a property card and then explain what it's about. This is what they showed. 
but that's not the one I liked no. and I can't find it. <laughs> Oh, this is from another state, actually, but it's the idea. It's is the certainly... idea of a property fair. Absolutely. Um, and the one I did like was. I like this. They point out the difference between the actual year build and the effective age process size. That's all I do. Well, so this was like what uh, a town of Westerly. Right, find the zoning. Mm hmm and they put down, you know, and they explained, and they explained it in, in the grades, you know, yep. what they all mm -hmm. meant. And so when you got to the grade level, mm -hmm. you could list, you know, how you do it, you know, what right. the grades are. Um, right. This is this is a very nice visual. Yes. With the arrows and, and yeah. small notes. I mean, there's more. In another color. You know, there's the another one. Yes. And then they put, you know, what you're. Right. Your codes right. and descriptions. The different, are. the different abbreviations. I mean, and that, the monics, that's yeah. pretty easy to do. Yeah. Key elements. Um, what was this part? You know, they just put it out there and pointed out different things and explained what they were. Improvement codes. We don't really do that. But no. A little different. No, and that then, doesn't apply. We have yeah. our use codes yeah. where 101 is a single family residence. We can list those. Right. And then, yeah. um, so that was kind of the idea of posting mm -hmm. it and explaining it and there was something else i had here that i wanted to to go over well so even this which i guess we're going to change but just to show what how to read the land value you had given me this yes and just put yep. that so somebody can land schedule right yeah and because we can add at the bottom of the line about how to read or how to calculate right. your own yeah what was this the building grade this was something else Oh, well, even something like this, you know, how you, I, this isn't what ours is, I guess. Well, kind of it is. Okay, this is a discussion of the grade types with descriptions and a value index. Oh, this Early is value yeah. index. Yeah. Um, but they put a, a percentage there you don't need, but at least you got right. the idea of what they. Wow, do they have a lot of categories above average? Average is way down here with a multiplier of 1.0. And they go all the way up to luxury with a multiplier of three against the basic again. figures. Wow. They don't go down as far. They know that. they go average, fair, fair to average, fair, poor, and very poor. That would be unsound, I suppose. Although well, unsound is usually zero here. Wow. But from average, average to good, good. Good minus, good, good plus, very good minus, very good plain, excellent, superb, superb minus. minus, superb, custom, and luxurious. Oh my goodness. What? Well, they probably got some fancy homes. Framingham, sure. Oh, that's entirely likely there. Let's say property. But when you're having to discern, discern between all of those, Wow, <laughs> they must have some really good guidelines. Oh well, I, they start the anyway condition definitions at excellent. They don't <laughs> conditions well, are excellent, very good, good, average. Well, anyway, I, I, I gotta keep looking because I can't find that one that I liked. Okay, <laughs> but that's kind of the idea. Well, you're finding good information. Yeah, this would be good, but. Um, Tells you what the three-letter description is that's on the par on the card for each yeah. area. That would be good. Yeah. They could and always then, call bits and pieces. Yeah. You from know, each like, from different ones. Well, this right. is it. Yeah. This is yeah. it. And we'll come up with the, the definitive. That's right. Well, because our prop none of the property cards seem to be exactly the same. No. So you're gonna have to go. Well, all the Patriot ones should be the same, you know, and so forth. But well, oh, okay. But, yeah, but uh Towns still have the rights to make some changes within the community as long as they're, as they're consistent across the community. Well, yeah, because I've been reading, you know, other things, you know, like uh, we have, I can pull up one what we go through, but um, we have, um, you know, different things that we list on ours that I thought was different. Okay. Um, if I can find a, let me pull this one back up. Uh, I got one here. It's like just mine. Um, you know, 
you're changing the style now and not just putting a lock home. You're putting the, right. It's a cape. Yeah. It and, happens to and be then the roof, constructed with logs. And some of them will have a, a place to put what is the roof made of. Yes, we have it in our information, but does it show up on the card? No. All right. Um, you know, exterior walls, what they're made of. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic, but I think when it gets down to here and what mm -hmm. these are. Grade and condition, yes. You know, uh, if there's an explanation, I mean, how many bedrooms, that's pretty clear. And yeah. so, and what you're considering modern, semi, whatever mm -hmm. you, what, you know, describe what those are. Mm -hmm. um, and like um, what RCNLD means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you, you know, just explaining right. it a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, your codes here. Right. And, um, I think that would be helpful. I think that you're right, and that many people would find it helpful. That's a, that's a great thing for us to pick up on, yes. And um, oh, because I did look at the town, and you thought there was questions and answers on there. I didn't find them in the, our on, on the assessment. We had a frequently asked questions page there. It may have been taken off for some reason because I didn't see it on there. They're changing that now, anyway. Right? Yes, they're changing the town website. Yeah. yeah, but there was no questions and answers that okay. I saw on there that I could okay. find. I mean, there's all the applications that you can apply, you know, print and do. Right. But I didn't see anything of the basic questions, which, I mean, like you gave me in this booklet that I first got was, you know, that stuff that people. Yeah. You know, well, I've made a note to get the frequently asked questions page yeah. for our next meeting mm -hmm. so that we can review that. Mm -hmm. And then if you think of other questions that should be added on top of that to this. Yep, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good to add, yeah. Okay, um, review of log homes and other categories because I had said I would group categories for tonight and I have. Um, for example, all of the tool sheds are now listed together in one place. Um, all of the equipment sheds are listed together in one place. The difference being an equipment shed tends to have electric, usually has electricity to it. A tool shed has nothing, a door, but that's it. Doesn't even need to have a window. An equipment shed probably has electricity. It may have water if it's a very good equipment shed. Something like a, uh, a shed for the pool filters and the filtration system would be a very good to excellent shed depending on its uh, construction and, and so forth. So I've grouped all them together into, into categories for review. I did take our colonial style or two-story homes and separate them out by date as to old and new. There is a very, very clear break-off date. Um, where there was a period of about 30, 35 years where none were built. And so that makes it a good idea to look at the two individually. The older ones is a truly historic group with the, mm -hmm. all the problems and challenges that an antique house brings with it, as well as recognizing the age factors of an antique house. Very few have been cut right back and, and rebuild completely from the beginning. And then the newer ones that we would call colonial style as being a more modern two-story building. So they're in a group. Um, in ranches, I've tentatively separated out raised ranches where you have a walkout basement along one wall. Doesn't matter long or short, but it's, you, it's, it's a full wall showing with usually a pedestrian door, sometimes a garage door, often a garage door, and regular house-sized windows in it, as opposed to having that whole side buried. A regular ranch has all four sides of the basement buried. But that is that considered a raised ranch? A raised, raised ranch, yes. Yes, has a partly exposed basement. Oh, because I will. Oh, a split level. What's the split? A split level is a split level. Yeah, that's where you go in. You can go up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And okay. that's that's uh, categorized all by itself in the books. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's that's sort of a uh, 
And odd dog all around <laughs> doesn't fit into either category very well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes we pick up some finished basement there. We have to look and see is it finished to the quality of the main house itself. And I try to make that determination. Yeah. And so I've been pretty well have those, all of the houses sorted out in their different ways. Um, we had the discussion about log homes mm -hmm. and should they be valued in the same cat, for example, a small Cape log home, mm -hmm. should that be equally valued with standard capes or is the log construction of it and the particular uh, market appeal of logs indoors and or outdoors, um, rounded logs indoors or log construction in, in general, is that a category that influences what grade it should be? Now, Russ, you had said you had thought some on that. I had thought a little bit of it. I, I hadn't thought about you comparing the same structure. I haven't. I think we ought to look at them that way too. You know, a cape here that's a standard cape, a T shaped standard yeah. cape, as opposed to a T shaped log house of the same square footage. Yeah. And look at our sales and see if there are distinct differences there that would indicate a change in grade. Um, Roxy brings up the valid point that many of our earlier ones were hand built by the owners, home built, mm -hmm. essentially. Just kits, right. numbered kit, Lincoln right. Lawton, numbered kits. And they kits. didn't come with a teacher, <laughs> <laughs> I recall well. And therefore, does the fact that they were home built uh, indicate they're hand built by uneducated owners, does that indicate a, uh, well, a let reduction? Me just, well, let me just say we built it because we didn't know carpentry skills. <laughs> So it was something and it was going to go up fast. Well, if you do you sledgehammer and a chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're the same. Yeah. Um, we do have the ability within our Marshall and Swift program to put in a five or ten percent deduction on cost based on the fact of it being homemade. And we've always had that basically for any self-built house. Right. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any self-built. Any self-built house. Mm. When we see an indication, then it's clear to us that it wasn't built by a carpenter and therefore there'd be an impact on its market value. Uh, we've had the, the ability to go in and put 10% off and make a note as to exactly why. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is important information. Yeah. It's, well, I think the desirability of a log home right now is good mm -hmm. for sales. At one point, they weren't. They were considered not as desirable at one point. You had to have a special client that wanted it. Perhaps they're in the same category that modulars used to be. Yeah. Modulars used to be considered a, a second lower degree. Right. Lower mm -hmm. rate of quality. And now that's not the case at all. They're completely. But they are. Well, they are. Because... It doesn't take very long of land settling and shifting for that split to show in your ceilings for your floors to have that you you can tell. Is that house or foundation? No, it's well, I mean, you're the ground is shifting. The ground is shifting, but shouldn't the foundation be staying solid? Well, should be. <clears throat> if it was built on. I mean, I, 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 the foundation I, was put yeah. it right. I, I know that mine, right. you, yeah. it, we've, you've got that hairline across the ceiling mm -hmm. and the, um, the wood floors mm -hmm. have just that slight buckle where the seam is. I know other people that have modulars home, modular homes and a truck goes by and things fall off the wall. Because well, I don't know if that's considered the, houses, the way the house was The houses, built. they vibrate more. There's, there's, they're not. Well, my dad had one. I didn't think it, actually, I thought it was actually built quite better than sometimes on site. Well, and that was the early, they look pretty. Late 90s, you know? early 2000s. Oh, well, see, mine my was dad? 84, yeah. so. Right, this, his was quite a bit newer than that. I'm yeah. thinking right around 2000. Yeah, so, mine, I mean, being construction at a site, you know, 
place they built them, they actually did them better than. Well, some. I think the quality of the construction oh, has improved. It certainly has improved yeah. significantly. Yeah. yeah. Yours was built in 84. 84? 84 or 86. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that the log homes all have a, I think people that buy them don't really realize the problem that a log home has. For one mm -hmm. thing, you know more than. Right. Right. They leak. <laughs> they, can, they can leak or, or they, you have problems with carbon or ants. If you're not very, very. But the south uh, side, you get rain and I got water marks coming down the wall from it leaking. I haven't had that. Um, when Matt's there up in the hill, they said they would have snow coming in theirs. Wow, that's pretty extraordinary. I know that the windows are cheap in mine. Mm -hmm. They were what was a, just a standard when Anderson double hung at the time with no screens or you know anything, no storms certainly, mm -hmm. single pink glass. Mm -hmm. um, I, this, mean, I, I, I definitely think there's different grades of bog. Well, homes. yeah, oh, now yes. there's some, some nice some of, homes. Some of the ones that I've seen, um, right. the, the Montana one. Oh, well, yes. I, I mean, are yeah. there are any here in town like that? Uh, Gary Topman, yes, has one. Oh, he does. Yes, with the huge yeah. logs. Yes. Yeah. We, have, we have a friend that built yeah. yeah. Oh, no, they're building them we have amazing. We a log home in Leiden. Mm -hmm probably 35 years ago mm -hmm. yeah but small uh -huh. but very solid and well built and yeah. sealed and tight and right you know their biggest issue was just maintaining the beauty of the wood on the inside yes. of the walls his wife was always sure but i mean all this time later and it's still mm. this solid beautiful no, you, you can see there's shows about building them now. Yes. And they're pretty, they're outstanding compared yeah. to. Yeah, the designs are, have come a long, long way. Okay, I got something to tell you. Okay. I went up to Alaska and, you know, they have the big, huge, yeah. massive um, um, yeah. log homes. Well, for their dog houses are what they're using for our logs. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some of them too. <laughs> and I'm up there. That's my well, how I built my house. And Same using, thing, the six inch. Yeah, yeah, and they're using them for the dog houses. It's kind of just a little. It is. It is. Well, this one that's just going to be sold coming up in a couple of weeks oh, is uh, Robbie uh, Edwards. That's not a lot, huh? No, but some it's modular. modular. Oh, good. we'll see if if that one has any difference in value. Yeah, that's an interesting one to, to check again to see if the modules oh, we don't know what he's are holding the yet, value. So, right, yeah. right. But, you know and idea. that's a newer one. That is. That's about 10 years old. Not, not even, I don't think. I no, think more than that. I know. I'm trying to I, remember exactly when the fire was. I think she said seven or eight years yep. they've been there. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's a big So house. And then there were that's several years before house. that that Heather was still there. So probably 10 ish. Well, yeah. Nine. I know. <laughs> You're right. Yes. Faster it goes. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. So we're at the stage right now. Everything's all divided up into groupings. Uh, sitting down with each group and saying, "Yes, is if if this one's a good, is this one also good? And this one and this one, or should one of these be, you know, should their grade be? I don't think the grade should be changed much, but the quality. Mm -hmm. Well, because we went to it and. I sat down with me and we kind of did it with the log homes and I understood what we were doing. But Good. then then when I think I told you when I compare it to other homes, I didn't think they compared equally. You feel that the logs logs were valued higher. Yeah. For example, a similar cape stick build. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. there's some really nice ones and then there's some well, that are of fair. Yes. You know, but but when we got to, you know, there's not as many. So when we got to the very good, I'm not so sure there's very good other homes that were much better in the very good category. Does that? Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, you're saying that a very good log home may not be of the same caliber as a very good stick build. Yeah. Because yeah, there are some be. very good ones in mm -hmm. town. Yes. So. Um, yeah. Oh, we have a wide range. A wide range of properties in town. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I was thinking after when I went home and was thinking about what we did. And okay, good. You know, we, um, 
did that. In, in that only group, it made sense, but. How is the division? What, where? I mean, I guess we got to go back to the basics. Where, where is this division of the thirty-five years? I mean, because that's oh. gonna, that's going to come into play. But that was only on the colonials. Well, no, but I would assume it should be on. It's. I've been looking to see if there was a, a real break point in the other types of houses, and some of them do have it. Yes, for example, actually, housing in Conway quit for 25 or 30 years at the time of the Civil War. You know, it was doing great up in the 1850s. And then 1860, we were heading into a severe depression in town. People were coming home from the war. It was a very difficult time and the businesses were moving out of town. Well, the industry, so the jobs were leaving. So you don't see new houses being built there at all. So something built before 1860, that almost is now a group within itself as far as any house is concerned. Capes and, and raised capes, especially because so many of them were built as housing for um, uh, shop workers. You know, they had they were doing well enough in the 50s and all. How many homes in town are that age? <laughs> oh gosh, um, well over, I would say half or more. Really? Well, probably, yeah. probably. You know, especially in Hollow, up there, right. probably every single one. That's right. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. In fact, you look along Orchard Street and These you see grown. how one design was used repet repetitively. One structural design with a little tweak here or tweak there. There's and houses on Reeds Bridge Road room. that are yes. built that are that were built in the 1700s. What? I know Elaine's is Elaine Campbell's is yep. well before 1860. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yours is one of the oldest in town. Yeah. Yep, the Adnar and Bartlett house. Yep. And uh, they tend to be to be well built. Obviously, that's one of the reasons why they're still standing. Mm -hmm. Plus, they've been lived in pretty continuously. And so some maintenance has been done. Well, you, all of the balloon frame ones yep. were, were cheaper. They were cheaper to build. Cheaper to build than a regular two story. Yes. What do you call in the balloon? It's the method of construction. It's, it's, it's the, a two-story, I don't know what you want to call it, one and a half story. Well, house. whatever. <laughs> it yeah. has an, well, my, take my house, for instance. Yeah. That's a balloon frame. And the studs that go from the downstairs floor go all the way to the rafters. There is, there is not a platform oh, or anything. For and the second floor. To support mean? the second floor, all I did was nail, nail a Ledger, uh, cross piece on between the two sides, that's it. Oh, lay the flooring on that. Oh, okay. Well, I had no idea. So, that. so there's no fire so stop. It, there there's... was no fire stops. Nothing. Right. It's it's less rugged structurally. It's kind of scary. Yeah, if you look at my roof, you can. Already. The roof were two by fours. Yeah, that's, that's right. Still. So they they were. And my ex's wife was built. That yep. house is the same. There's quite a few right, of them up around up the corner on Ives Road. Yeah, in that whole neighborhood. Yes, because it was walking distance to work. Mm. Yeah, we have a lot of them here in the village. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, and uh, so they can be a grouping, and I think it's important to look at them carefully with those features in mind. Not that it's going to be a house built, even if it was built in 1850. It's not going to look like that inside anymore. <laughs> we don't have anything like that. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll as far as kitchens you. they're concerned I'll, at all. I'll argue with that one. You will? Yeah. Go ahead. The one on uh, back of Everett's garage. Oh, yeah. Up on Manning Road. On Manning Road. That That's one, true. I bet you, is still the same as it was damn near. In, in the 20s? Yes. Yes, certainly. They added a kitchen, but it's a very. Uh, were you in? Yeah. I know we were. I yeah. was in it. Yeah. And it was really a 1920s at best kitchen. Yes. It's a uh, property that went into the Gaylord family generations ago mm -hmm. and has been handed down over the years within the family. And in the last 
at least 50 years, if not more than that. It's only been used as an occasional um, summer home. Now the Morgans isn't very modern. I mean, they-, they True, they've chosen to keep it very old fashioned looking inside. Very, yeah, uh, yeah it, it's still has a lot of original. They still have- Yes. A, uh, yeah, all the woodwork and everything. And wood burning stove. Mm -hmm. wood-burning furnace right you know everything's so there's still there's still some mm -hmm. oh. well, when i say stove that... i mean cooking stove yes i know what yes so that's by choice oh yeah yeah I, well so is keeping a 1920s kitchen there you go <laughs> yeah right. but um that's why it's important that we have a good look at these again and i'd like to start as soon as possible well, not looking at values taxable values but looking at our uh judgmental determinations, make sure they still hold. And if anyone needs a change of uh, grade, a quality, mm -hmm. uh, not quality, condition, condition, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have any time before you leave, but. Um, tomorrow or Friday, I don't know. It's... And you're pretty tied up. A lot of people out. They're not sick, are they? No, they're not sick. No, we got trade shows, and this is vacation time. Every time we turn around, you're missing two people. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a small business when you right. miss two people. Yeah, that hits. Somebody else has got to fill in. Sure, it's it's twenty percent of your group mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the office. Um. Well, we could try working on it and see how many houses you know, and, and if we need to take, take a ride around town with our list in hand, mm -hmm. as far as looking at condition is concerned, exterior condition anyway. Um, and when do you have to have this all put together? All the values should be ready to submit September 1. So a month. So we have August. Yeah, I'll be gone a couple of days in the middle of August. <laughs> I'll be gone the 10th through the 15th. Okay. Yeah, I'm driving out to Toronto, making the kids. So the 16th, I'll probably be here, but I <laughs> steady a leg I'll have under me by that point. <laughs> but happily, the dogs are staying home. <laughs> But um, I hope she has someone staying. At oh yeah, Lance is going to go out and stay there, stay there, because Kate's at our house anyway. Yeah. So Friday would be good. Um, no, Friday's <laughs> not good. Well, Roy's coming in and is able to come in in the morning right. as I confirm with so, him. And you don't know how long he'll be here. He estimated three hours. 9 30 on. So figure one. Yeah. Two. Yeah, 12 30 or one. Yeah. Yeah. I could stay and do that. So you so what are you saying? That we could work Friday afternoon. Okay. Is that coming in for I you? I can do it. I can do that. All right. So well, why don't you confirm it? Right. You know, I'll do that by email tonight, yes. Yeah. And uh yeah, I can do that. And uh, that would work well anyway. You and me can't come that day I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, I can be here and we could make very good use of that time. Mm -hmm. And then we could have lists ready for Russ's review too. I could even get them to you at home in case you wanted to sit up in the evening looking at them. <laughs> no, because he doesn't use his computer. No, I print them out. Yeah, yeah. It's good to do that anyway because you can see a grouping at a time on a big sheet of ledger well, paper. My computer is this. And it's oh, I know. A, I do the same thing. It's I, a little hard with those charts. Yes, it, it is. On the I, know. IPad. <laughs> I know. With 25 columns across or 35 because we're looking at so many different factors. Yeah. And I tried printing it out and I couldn't get the whole thing on what on yeah. my what eight by eight. Right, and a half uh, by 11, yeah. sure. And here we have the ledger paper to use. So yeah. that's the best way to go about it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes care of our review for tonight, I think. Okay. Uh, 
Roy will be working on land schedule on the utilities and um, How far probably off are we on lanes? I mean, what, just as a... a lot of places seem to be coming in at the $80,000, range for first acre. And that's a huge increase. We don't want to go from 65 to 85 in one year. So part of it is, I know I'm doing my residuals fine. I double check them against the course and everything else. So I know my process is fine there for determining a, how much of the sale value is for land. Some bought all house and didn't pay much of anything for land. You know, they bought for 400,000 and 375 is what we have as value on the house, which leaves a value of 25 left over for land. Well, for a three acre parcel, that doesn't quite cut it. Doesn't cut it. Right. But is it also time? We know we've had enough, we've had several properties sell that sold high because they had a view. And I hate the words view factor. And in the past, the market had not recognized it in Conway. It had proven it out in Conway. Now we have a change toward that direction. And the biggest problem with the view factor is how to define the view. <laughs> Ashfield at one point had a, had a system whereby they figured, how many degrees is it? Is it a 90 degree view? Or is it a hundred eighty degree view? And how, what, far, and how far? And how many? How many hillsides and can you see beyond? What are you viewing with that? Well, right, right, right. <laughs> and and are you? You know, do you have to be able to see a quarter mile? Is that a view? Uh -huh. Or a mile or more? Is that a view? The the it's a very 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 subjective category. Yeah, we need to sit on my deck and talk about my view. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the woods. I don't have one. It's not a question. Which well, one would you I, view? I have the Conway pool for one. Um, mm. So my view is a bunch of half naked people running <laughs> around on the beach. Um, view in the other direction is farm equipment. Right. View in the other direction is oh, farm equipment, diesel gas tank, and a bunch of broken down fencing. Hmm. Well, I don't <laughs> think you, I would say offhand that you don't have a view factor. <clears throat> I should. Well, now my view is a lot of greenhouses, which I think takes well, that's away. That's true to your, to your south, yeah. Yeah, so that's not what it used to be. <laughs> that's right, when it was an open field. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so it's not a house next to me, but mm -hmm. which is good. But. So one thing, another thing to think about then is how would we define a view factor if there is one? Hmm. Yeah. The house on Fields Hill Road. Has a view factor. Oh dear heaven, yes. <laughs> that yes. has a view factor. That is at least a 90 degree view. Oh, Horton. I was just going to say yeah. 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 But this one, this has got a view from the top of a top of the hill overlooking the top of other hills. Oh, yeah. You can see for miles. Yeah. I mean, you, you would suspect offhand that Dean Lee's house, you can see a beautiful lot from there, beautiful amount from there. Singular's house, you can see him in Ednoff. Uh, not a very big. I think my brother has a quite a skinny. nice. Your brother has a gorgeous. <laughs> both brothers, for that matter, probably. Well, I don't know Kenny how much Ken has. Kenny the one, doesn't. the one on East Skinny that was empty for the years. The one. Yes, 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 yes. It's He's now, got a beautiful. It's now Heberline, right? Yes, yes. Well, well, and then sitting on that back deck, he has a nice view out the back. I don't know what's up on the ground. One hill deep. Yeah. Yeah. Looking out over the state forest. Uh, this is where we have to. This is where you run into the snag because yes, you look somebody, one way and you, it's beautiful. You, you look somebody the over here, and well, my view isn't as good as right. That, this view that's going to be very that view yes. better than this. View that here. and the <laughs> difficulty of keeping track of them, uh, because even if the new house up on Fields Hill Road had some stuff grow up five or ten years. Views they change. lose at least half of it. Yep, use change. Yes. Mm. And so that would have to be all. What if a factory was built right smack in the middle of your view? Mm -hmm. There's a house, you know, property here near the center of town that has a beautiful view out over the village. Yep, there are a couple up on West Parsons that you look right across oh. to the other part of town. So it's important I, we I, consider it. 
for a, de a determination at another time. Thank you, Sam. That's going to be I'm not getting people guys. all very angry. <laughs> I know, but I mean, they're not. If it proves out in the dollars, I guess you got to do something. Yeah, that's what we have to look at. Yeah. Well, you know what was interesting to me, just because um, do you tax people or assess people for um, um, driveways? Paved we, driveways. We have no. not assessed paved driveways so or stone why walls. Not? Because no, no walls, no, basically no landscaping. Right. right. Patios, yes. Patios. Stone patios or concrete patios around a pool. Yes. But a, a, a blacktop driveway is a lot of money. It's mm -hmm. an asset if they go to sell it. I mean, I would say that's pretty easy to tax. I a, was told by a real estate agent that paving our driveway would make no difference to the value of our house when we want to sell it. And we've got a big ass driveway. She said it isn't going to make a damn bit of difference. Well, again, it's a consideration. Right. We can talk to a couple of uh, real estate brokers too. We can talk to Journey Schwartz and Phil Pless. Mm -hmm. They both do a lot of work here in town. Sarah Newman. Sarah Newman, Tim Packard. Well, I mean, that's an easy thing to... Wanda. Well, it is and it isn't. What do you what do you got? Are you gonna do it by square foot? Yeah. You would. That would be the way well, to do it. Yes. What you and have to do. You can't charge uh, somebody paid, with is, a driveway this long the same amount as you as somebody right. with a driveway is, that would have to be linear foot or square foot. Is pavement to chip seal to I mean there's oh, different I know. Types pavement of pavement or TRG or gravel or yes. Well, you've got chip seal, which looks like it's paved. But it's really not. What's chip seal? Chip seal is you have the TRG and then they they pour oil on top of it and they roll it and it looks paved. So you get right down and look at it with right. your own. It, 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 it looks like it. a paved driveway. It's, it's, a, black it's, it's quicker and it's cheaper. Yes. But it has the same look mm -hmm. and effect. Mm -hmm. May or may not hold up as as and well. Not, right. And then you can have chip seal over asphalt. Yes, you can do that and too. Then that Yep, and you Holds got up like an asphalt driveway, but doesn't look like an asphalt. But driveway. they got that new rubber seal you can put down on it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now we basically don't do landscape, That's landscaping right. and walls and driveways. And, and we have walks. some places that where the landscaping probably does contribute to the value of the house. It certainly does. No question about it. There's now, in recent years, been some beautiful stonework done around town. Mm -hmm. And that was not a factor 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. But people have had the wherewithal and the interest. And we've had people locally who could do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's brought some uh, very attractive work to town. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the questions we ask on the sales verification form is, is there something about your property in particular, other than the house, that made it attractive to you. If I don't have it, your attention. Yes, that if I don't have it phrased exactly that way in the form, I should. We have, is there anything outside the property? You know, and in other words, in a budding on a budding properties that affects the value of your house, yes or no? And if so, what is it? Um, is it, is it, uh, Besides something that would be obnoxious, considered obnoxious, mm -hmm. cut into your market value. So we're always trying to find the answers. Mm -hmm. And we're always trying to apply them fairly. And therefore, we have to ask questions every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does anybody else have anything to bring to the meeting? Well, I the only thing I want to do is get my 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 done. <laughs> We're not going to do that in open. Well, well, I how do we going to do it? When I asked you what you wanted on the agenda, you should have put that on the agenda. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll do it next time. Next, well, time, how, next, how next we... time I send the email out, is there anything particular anyone wants on the agenda? Okay. Remind me, and it'll go on the agenda, and it'll be part of the meeting. Okay, so cool. but we have to do it in a meeting in here. We do have to do it in a meeting because. Mm -hmm. But we've already had enough for tonight, I think. Uh, we've gone well over an hour and a third now. Well, let me just ask you, did you, um, did, because there was a, 
question as to with the Tyler programming. Yes. What Did question? that get straightened out? I've had a couple of questions probably sorted out since then and maybe sent in another one. It was, well, it wasn't changing. It was oh, okay. Average okay. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did so I just wondered, straight? yes, did how did that, that get straightened? Yeah. I have not had the answer to that yet. They have had to dive in deep into the interior guts of the program. So how can we... I'm getting tired of hearing that. How, how, how do we... Um, to a conclusion on that, that right. if there's um, still a problem. <laughs> I mean, am I the only house in town with that problem? I mean, it just seems to me like I can't be the only one. I don't know if you're the only one. I've not double checked the calculations, the intricate down in the detail calculations on everyone's house. I mean, we have- I mean, that's the only way you can do it is house 800 by house. And 870 dwelling units and you'd have to do it house by yeah. house. There, there, just so everybody knows, there is a public hearing that's gonna be starting in about 20 minutes. Okay. Just next door. Yes, right there. Yeah, um, which means- It's just gonna get loud. Loudly. It's just oh, gonna, it's right. just, yeah, it's just okay. gonna get loud. Well, um, I was just wondering if you had come to, um, I have not had that answer. And uh, what are they telling you? Anything? Uh, they're saying, well, they're looking also uh, into the why our overrides haven't been included in the calculation. But are those two aren't really tied those together? Those two are two different. They're right, two different, two different ones, yes. So they haven't given you an answer on either one of them. Not on those two. But I've had answers on several others. Well, and, and then I, I think the other one was um, depreciation on the. Yes. Now, did, did you figure that one out? Or did you get an answer for that? They told me which schedule they're using. I looked at the schedule. I think that might need some consideration also. I figured I'd show that to Roy too. Um, I thought we'd be best using. They have one schedule that only runs 30 years before things are down to about 10%. And that's probably good for sheds, for outbuildings, you know, that aren't, and we have several hundred of them. Uh, outbuildings, then one doesn't necessarily maintain an outbuilding as well as one does the dwelling. Mm -hmm. And so using a 30 year expected life there is practical, whereas the uh, system assumes 55 <coughs> for residences. Now, when we have folks living in a 250-year-old house, perfectly happily and perfectly comfortably, a 55-year-old uh, effective age seems uh, kind of crazy, but maybe that's not too far off. In fact, one you mentioned earlier, excuse me, you know, has a much more modern kitchen. It's more of a 1950s, 60s kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so its effective age should be probably in the 40, 50-year range, yeah. But um, I'll ask Roy for some advice and see if he is any happier with the style of program. How many, other, how many other towns does he work with that has this program? Yes, I will. And the other thing is um, maybe asking the assessors in some of the other towns directly. Yes. Have you had this? Have you had this problem? And how did they solve it for you? Right. I also have a good in now with the assessor in my former hometown because they have Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. And one of the women has been training very, very deeply. And apparently she's been able to solve almost everything they came across. Oh, yes. Yeah. We, we want to borrow her. You bet. Yeah. I'd love to see if we could talk her into coming out for a day. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so when's the next meeting? Oh yeah, not, it would be in two week weeks. I'm right. gone. Yeah. It would be in two and weeks. You're not, but, but you're we're not here on the 10th. It's supposed, be the yeah, it's a, no, it's the 17th it has to be, which is the third. We we meet on the first and the third. Well, yeah. She's not here the first, oh, he's right. not here the 10th. Well, so, he, no, no, Lee's are. not here. I'm Lee's not, not here, here the 10th. 10th. So it's gotta be the 17th, oh. which is the third Wednesday. Okay, month, which it is the third, that's okay. 
Yeah, because that's the August page. So right if there. we need to, though, we could do the 31st could, again, or because we need to get information together. We do. And, and um, could you do the 31st? Of, 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 I can't. I know. Yeah, oh, I was going to say, but do, we, do you need to have a, a full blown out meeting to be working on what we the need tax is, value? No, we so need, you just we need, need a good have work a, session. Have a couple people here. We need to have a good work session. session. Yeah. Where we're determining, you know, does this one belong in this group or that right. group? And that's not a re that's and not, not a doing meeting. values. Oh, okay, we're that, doing that work be... that's preliminary to values, right. but we're not doing values. Right, but, we but have that's to have not ready something by that September. needs to be a posted. That's correct. Scheduled meeting. That's just your. That can be a work that's session. That's just at, work. At, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I thought because it's a quorum, it has to be posted. It's not a meeting. It's work. It's yeah. a work session. It's a I'm work just session. questioning. Yeah, no, it's, sure. it's not a we meeting. We would not vote on anything. You know exactly. And we would. Um, you know, come to conclusions of quality and, and con condition. Pardon me, I'm being tired. Mm -hmm. And then um, we would vote on the results at, at the, next the next following meeting. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just trying to think where that, when that all has to get done by on that, like yeah, before September. And when we can. Well, 17th leaves us two weeks. We can probably sneak if we had to one week into September and that's it. Because Jan needs the information sent to QDS, the tax billing program, on or about the 20th, in order for in back before mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. the 15th, probably for bills to be sent on time, 15th of September. I know I'm gone the 27th for two weeks. Oh, so you're gone in, in the first week right. of September, too. So right, yeah. yes. So we might, maybe we should do like the 17th and the 24th and try to get something accomplished. Well, we can meet anytime. If we met Friday mm -hmm. and could stay later and Russ was able to come in Friday after work mm -hmm. for a little bit. You're talking about a work session or are you yes. talking, okay. No, I'm talking work session. What do you think about that? I'll see. Oh. Yeah, um, we could do a work session anytime. We could do it tomorrow. We could do it next week. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, nothing would be voted until all three of us could look at it. Mm -hmm. I have the town clerk's annual meeting Friday. So I am gone. Well, that's fine because it's not a. Yeah. And I have a wedding Saturday, so yeah. I can't be. Yeah, it's, not a, it's not a minutes. Meeting. New, not a minute's meeting. And I minutes. cannot contribute to the work. All right. So for sure to 17. Absolutely. Yes. 17. Okay. I move we adjourn. Okay. I agree. <laughs>